All right, now we have taken our, our shots on campus and some of us outside of campus trying to get interesting uses of architectural and man-made spaces, interior, exterior. Now the challenge is choosing three of them that you want to work on. And I'll just show you a really basic example first. This isn't one of my favorites, but I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. The first thing I did was I took them from my memory card and I saved them onto a folder on the desktop that I'll keep with my assignment. And now I'm just going to show you some basic processing. Now a lot of this type of photography is about flattening out the three-dimensional space into an interesting two-dimensional composition. And to do that, I shot with a really stopped down aperture. So I used kind of the landscape auto settings on my camera. It's very bright outside, so I wanted to have automatic light readings. And I shot between an f-stop of 10 and an f-stop of 16, so keeping the aperture quite, quite small so that everything would be in focus, so that even the clouds looked fairly in focus. And it was a bright enough day, it allowed me to get shots without a very long shutter speed, which makes them nice and sharp, even though it was windy outside. So this is the kind of detail I want to bring out in my shots. Now the limitations are, we are not allowed to crop our shots. So how can we process them to make them look more engaging and more um, intentional in their composition without cropping them? Well, we do a little cheat. Not cropping means that we have to keep this exact picture plane. But if I make a duplicate of it, and then I command T to change its size, instead of just scaling it up by holding down shift, like we've done in the past, though that's kind of a, a way to cheat and crop, right? Like if I didn't want this bar in there, I could just do that to bring it off. And this wasn't showing in my viewfinder. Often cameras capture a little bit more on the sensor than you see in your viewfinder. Then I might need to drag that off a little bit. And now that's what I was going for. But what I really tried to line up in my viewfinder and thought I was pretty successful, but then you'll see them slightly differently when they're in your computer, is I wanted to get it exactly corner to corner. So it's exactly half and half. So just by using scale, I can improve it a little bit. Right? So now that's the easy part. Now I duplicate that layer. And we're going to do this in duplicates just so you can see the different effects. Though so you could do it all to one layer as well. And now I'm going to do Command T. And what I'm going to do this time is try to get all the verticals vertical. And to do that, I'm going to use the skew transformation. And what the skew transformation does is it tries to fix the curve of your lens. Okay? And you can tug it multiple ways. So I can tug from the bottom and from the top. And everything will still look very man-made and very orderly, but how do I know when it's horizontal? I can put guides there. Or I can even turn the grid on if I like. But I tend to like to use guides. And I can see I'm not quite there yet. But because it's, it's manipulating the curvature of the lens and locking it with skew, I can tug it from both sides. I can even push it back a little bit. I think of it like rolling dough with a, a rolling pin. I just keep pushing and pulling from the different corners until everything's horizontal the way I want. Or not horizontal, vertical the way I want. And placed in the corner that I want. So I'm pretty close right now. let's see. So that one's leaning a little bit that way, that one's leaning a little bit. I just have to work on it a little bit more. 
and I'll be there. So it's pretty precise work using the skew function. Now on this one, I don't have any horizontals. But I'll show you that in another, in another process. All right, so now what I'm hoping for is this optical illusion. And let me get this back to that corner. So what do I do? I, I duplicate it. And I'm just going to scale it up a little bit, holding down Shift, and maybe rotate it. Oh, I don't want to rotate it because I have the verticals. So I just want to use the, the arrow keys. And then I could use what's called distort and just drag that corner right up to the edge. So it's right on there. And still maintains all my verticals. Vertical there, vertical there, vertical there, vertical there. And if you work with it enough, you can get it to work, no matter what angle you shot it at. Now this is a very, very aggressive composition, <laughs> cutting it exactly in half. And it's funny is because of the verticals, it actually makes it an optical illusion. Also because it goes thick to thin here. And it makes it look like it's curving, even though it's not. So that's pretty interesting. And I can test that. I can draw a point from here to here as a straight line. Let me get right to the, the top of it there. And you see that that is truly straight, but it feels like it's curving. Some fun, fun optical illusions on man-made things. And I guess if I'm being really a stickler, I want to tug that corner down just a little bit. So I'm going to use, in this case, distort for just the last adjustments. And just tug it down a teensy bit. Hit return. Now that's, that's kind of an odd use, right? But it really makes your eye do weird things. And now the test is, that's what I ended up with. And this is without any color processing. And that's what I started with. And it, it took care of the little jet with the calm trail for me because I had to kind of isolate it into what I wanted. Right. Now the next step would be doing uh, adjustments to the levels, doing adjustments to the color. And just instead of making duplicates with direct adjustments, I can do that with layer adjustments. So I do layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and again, these probably don't need very much. I don't want to, it's already such a bright day, I don't think I want to intensify the whites too much, but I want to optimize the histogram a little bit. See what it looks like a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. I kind of like it a little bit lighter in the midtones. Looks a little sharper. Again, the lighting we had give us, gave, gives us very, very crisp shadows. If it's too bright, I can limit the uh, the highlights. Okay, and then I'm going to do another adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, color balance, and these are my standard. And it was natural white light. It was diffused slightly, so the color is very accurate, but I could decide to bring out some more warmth in it if I wanted to, like so, or more of the cools. I can make the window reflect the sky even more. I think I like it on the cool side. But I don't want to lose all the warmth, so in the, in the highlights I'm going to go a little warmer. And the shadows will go a little cooler.
And then you can turn on and off your adjustment layers. You can put them at different opacities, see if you think they're helping. And once you're finished, you're simply going to say file, save as, Carl, assign eight, one, processed. Because this is my first exposure for assignment eight. Uh, as a PSD is actually what I would do because I'm still working on this and then when I flatten it and, and uh, want to print it then I can save it as a TIFF now you'll also want to upload your original exposure so I'll upload this one as a as a JPEG and then this one as a JPEG so I can save that as well save as A JPEG now to the desktop. Just make sure it's under five megabytes. And then you already have your original. So I'll just copy that onto the desktop to upload as well. So those are my first, first shots to upload. Unprocessed processed just to strengthen it up same composition all right now I'll do it to one that needs horizontals and verticals worked with so I go to my my shots that I think have a lot of potential I really like this one and all you can do is hope that it all works out the way you thought huh strange <laughs> try that again this one open with Photoshop and I kind of wish this yellow flowered tree wasn't there but in a way, maybe, maybe it helps soften and give scale to everything. Now, I did my very best, as I wanted you to try, to line it up, to center it, to get it vertical with the edges of the picture plane, and to make my horizontals horizontal. But you'll see, as they get close to the edges of your camera, camera's um, sensor, especially the cheaper the camera is, they'll start to distort more. So that's why we, we often have to add processing. Or if you're um, a professional architectural photographer, you might use multiple cameras or larger format cameras for this. So I make a, a duplicate of it. And the first thing I'm going to try to do is make sure my horizontals are horizontal. So I can use guides. They look pretty good. And if it is man-made, everything should be parallel. Yeah, if your guides aren't showing, go to View, Show, and make sure guides have a check mark by them. And the shortcut for that is Command Semicolon. And you can toggle them on and off that way. Command um, Apostrophe gives you a grid. And sometimes that can be helpful. But I prefer to use the guides. So my horizontals look pretty good. But I want to have those guides there because now as I fix the verticals, I want to make sure that the horizontals don't get disturbed, which can happen. So I'm going to hit Command T, and I'm going to use Skew, and I'm going to start tugging at the different sides like rolling dough, never pushing in, always tugging out until the, um, the curvature of the lens is standard. I'm going to look at both sides of the verticals. And they might shift as I keep distorting them. But you can see how that, that angle goes a little bit wrong. So I'm going to keep pulling it until it lines up on that line. And then same thing on this side. Keep pulling it till it lines up. 